So welcome to Selling on Walmart and Amazon the Smart Way. I'm Paul Rutherford, co-founder of ScanPower, and we've been developing e-commerce apps for over 10 years. And I think what is unique about ScanPower, I think, is that we engage with our users uh, to build tools and workflows they need. And I think this is a great opportunity for those of you new to ScanPower uh, to work with us to build an integrated Walmart solution for the next 10 years. So today we're going to lift the lid on Walmart selling. And before we begin, please mute your microphones uh, unless we call on you for a question. Um, you can also ask questions for the panelists in the chat area. So um, sometimes the chat is hidden in Zoom. You can find it with the three buttons and, and bring up the chat window. And we'll get to your questions um, as, as we see them. Um, and we'll try to answer questions at the end of each section. So we're going to have two sections, part one, what you need to know about selling on Walmart, and part two, specific strategies you can use to scale on Walmart. So we've got a few more people joining. I'll make sure everyone gets in. So with that, I'm excited to introduce our panel of experts. Uh, first off is Sarah Ray of the Sellers Network. Sarah has been selling online since 2006 and transitioned to full-time in 2019 while a stay-at-home mom. In 2021, she expanded to Walmart Marketplace at the same time, achieving over seven figures of sales on Amazon and six figures on Walmart. Sarah co-leads the Sellers Network, a Discord community for resellers, and she enjoys mentoring other sellers on both Walmart and Amazon. Uh, Sarah has also been an ambassador for ScanPower for almost six months, and so she's helped people understand the benefit of ScanPower, um, as well as uh, help me understand how Walmart works. Uh, next up, please welcome Omar Ramirez. Omar is an e-commerce entrepreneur who began his journey in 2020 with eBay and quickly added Walmart, Amazon, and Mercari. Uh, and Omar transitioned to full-time selling in 2022, and he is dedicated to cultivating his online ventures with a commitment to longevity and sustainable growth. Next, we have Leah Rexrode-Thomas. Leah has over six years of experience on multiple platforms, including Amazon and Walmart. She is passionate about simplifying and streamlining processes, as well as developing creative strategies for diversification and growth. Before entering e-commerce, Leah's professional background was in finance and health and fitness. Finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Michael Bagwell, Michael started with eBay arbitrage in the early 2000s, way back, and then transitioned to Amazon, scaling to six figures in only nine months. He continued to expand his ventures to Walmart, uh, where he surpassed $300,000 in sales uh, by the end of 2023, after only a few months. Michael lives in Georgia with his wife and two toddlers and loves travel, outdoor adventures, and culinary exploration. I like the sound of that. So in part one, we're going to talk about uh, what you need to know about selling on Walmart. And uh, Sarah is going to start us off. Sarah, um, feel free to share your screen if you need to. Okay. Give me just a moment here. That didn't work. Sorry, one second here. <laughs> we just tested it too. Okay. How about that? We can see it. Okay. Awesome. So thank you everybody for coming. Um, I just wanted to do a quick rundown on how to apply for your Walmart account. Um, the difference between Amazon and Walmart right off the bat is with Amazon, you either are going to pay a fee for 
um, each item you sell, or you can have that pro account and pay monthly. With Walmart, you, there is no fee associated monthly. You just pay as you sell. So that's a benefit to being a seller because you can take it as slow or as fast as you want, but you also have to apply to be allowed into the marketplace. So we're going to step through the application just real quick. Um, and then if you have any questions, you know, just let me know. So this is the step-by-step -step guide. Okay. So I've put the link right here and I believe Paul's going to send this out so that you can reference it later, but you can click that link to apply for the Walmart marketplace account. And it's going to take you right to the application. Right now, Walmart is really pushing to bring new third-party sellers into their marketplace and specifically Amazon sellers. Um, so for a limited time, they are offering discounts on Walmart fees for the first 90 days that you're selling on the platform. And I've included some fees on the, <clears throat> on the side there that they're discounting as far as like referral fees. And if you use their repricer, you get a discount on your fees. Um, if you choose to do WFS, which is Walmart's version of Amazon FBA, so it's Walmart Fulfillment Services, you'll get a discount on your fees there. And you can even try their prep services and get a discount there too. So if you're interested in Walmart, it's a really good time to sign up um, because you're going to get that discount in the beginning, which is super helpful. Okay, so when you first go to that screen, that welcome to marketplace is what you're going to see. It's just going to be a really quick rundown with your name and business information, email, phone number, and then it's going to automatically apply you, uh, I'm sorry, automatically approve you while it verifies your information. Some things to keep in mind when you are applying, you have to have an EIN number. You cannot apply with your social security number. It will be an automatic denial. They want to be able to verify your business information. So before applying, make sure that the IRS has your current business information on file and that matches your EIN paperwork, which also matches what you're putting in the application. And then the third thing they're looking for is history of e-commerce. So I mentioned specifically Amazon sellers. They're really looking for those, but we've seen eBay sellers, Shopify sellers, get approved if they can prove that they have a history of good customer service. Walmart is very pro-customer and they're looking for um, sellers that have established you know, that platform and um, have that history with good reviews and such. So once you do that, there's going to be three sections that you're gonna go through in order to verify your account. So the first part, it's going to ask you more details about your business information. It's going to ask you what kind of products are you bringing to the platform? When you choose your category, that also assigns you a rep that is versed in that category. So maybe you sell toys or you sell beauty or sports. That doesn't mean that's all you're able to sell. It just means your rep is going to be assigned to you based on what your primary category is. So give that a quick thought before you apply, but just know that you're not stuck with that. You can sell anything on the Walmart platform. And then the next section it's going to ask for is your payment, which is right here. So how it works with Walmart is you'll sign up with either Payoneer or HyperWallet and Walmart pays new sellers biweekly. So your um, funds will be deposited into either of these accounts, whatever you choose. And then from there, they'll be deposited into the bank account of your choice. I personally have Payoneer. I've had zero issues. I know people, in fact, Omar, who's on the panel, uses HyperWallet. And um, I know he's had a really good experience too. So um, whatever one you choose, that your payments are going to hit that first. And like I said, at first, new members or new sellers are going to be paid bi-weekly but eventually what I love about Walmart is as you've established a history of selling and sales, you can actually qualify for on-demand or daily payments. And I use daily. So they send me um, my funds daily as I think the minimum is like 300. As soon as you get to 300, you're getting those deposits daily. And that's a huge help during Q4. Okay. Okay. After that, you're going to step through your shipping templates. 
So for those of you that sell on eBay and Amazon, this is going to be really familiar for you. You're going to already have a default shipping template set up. I believe it's like six or seven days. It's value shipping. It's free shipping. You have to provide that to the customer. But then you can also offer things like two-day or three-day shipping, and those will give you a buy box boost. So it's actually in your best interest if you choose to um, edit your shipping templates. For me, I live in Michigan, so I offer two-day shipping for the states that surround me, like Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, um, because I know I can provide that shipping service quickly. And then I'm getting that buy box boost for my area. Um, you can also assign templates for like heavy items or um, items that need specific packaging. I use ShipStation. I know a lot of sellers use v uh, Vico, VQ, whatever it's called. Um, you can also do your shipping right through Walmart. They have their own um, setup too, or something like Pirate Ship. And then for return labels, this section is where you are going to choose what the customer sees when they do a return and they send it back to you. So for instance, if you don't want it to say your name, you could choose it to warehouse and it could say warehouse at an address. Um, if you don't want it to be your home that they send those products to, you could have like a PO box or a warehouse address. And then the same thing for the return centers. When customers return their items to the Walmart stores, Walmart will return those items to you at um, the address that you choose. Okay, so once you step through those um, three steps, then that your setup process is complete. You will hear from Walmart once they verify the address information, like I said in the beginning. Um, and then from there, you're open to the catalog and you can start listing. Um, I've put together some videos on my YouTube channel at arbitrage.avenue if you want to check those out. And the last thing I'm going to say about the new application process is if you get denied right away, don't take that denial as the end all. We've helped a lot of people get approved after that. And I have some steps that you can take. So feel free to reach out to me if you apply and you get denied um, because there are ways around that. They just have bots that automatically kick out applications for certain reasons, but um, let's get you on the platform. So definitely make sure you reach out. And that's all I have for new accounts. Let me get off the stage here. Sarah, do you want to talk a little bit about um, ungating and brand restrictions? Yeah. So a lot of us that sell on Amazon are used to being gated in certain brands or categories. Walmart is very much the same, except it's a lot easier to get ungated. So you will come across categories. Um, for instance, like Halloween is a gated category. Um, Perfumes, like higher value perfumes and makeup, those are gated. But um, the same way that we step through that process with Amazon, where we submit an invoice or a receipt, is how you will ungate on Walmart as well. So they have a case that you would open. You'd, you'd submit your invoice receipt with some questions that they have, and you'd provide the answers, and you'll go from there. Um, it's a lot easier. They're not as strict. So that part's really nice because you can literally sell all the brands that you're restricted now on Amazon on Walmart. Woohoo! Right? <laughs> My favorite part. So if you have that death pile, you can definitely get through it. Um, Thank you, Sarah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, next up, we're going to have uh, Leah talking about sourcing and seller fulfilled listings and, and fulfillment. Leah. Thank you, Paul. I get to talk about the fun stuff. This is the fun part of the job. Uh, RA sourcing, better known as retail arbitrage. Um, this allows me to be able to get out of my daily routine, make connections. Um, staying in the warehouse every day is not my cup of tea. I like to be out there in front of people. I do enjoy online arbitrage when I need to do it. Uh, it's available, but retail arbitrage is my baby. Um, on this, when we started, we had Amazon going. We had eBay, Macari, and Poshmark. We had a lot of stale inventory, if you will, for, from eBay. So what I did to learn, I like to learn the nuts and bolts of an application before I jump into it. Before we even started from, say, eBay to Poshmark, I like to do something for around six months. Make sure it's working, get the processes down. 
and then continue on with something else. So with uh, Walmart, we were able to test a lot of our stale products off of our shelf. So therefore, you know, we weren't going out and spending more capital. We were just pulling items off the shelf, learning how to list, making sure they said, and they were moving. We started moving a lot of inventory off of eBay, surprisingly enough. And it's a great way to learn Walmart again. So I recommend if you're starting out, source from yourself. Um, how do I know where to source? When I go on a sourcing trip, I normally do two to three trips a week. Uh, I know what I'm after for the majority of the time, and that's probably from store specials. It could be from um, items that I have wanted to purchase online, but there's a limit. So I know that I can do an in-store pickup. So at that point, I will order items and also take advantage of my cash back so that I'm you know, achieving both of those. Um, MapQuest is my best friend. I love to get out and go. So I'll jump on MapQuest and I'll have a list of stores that I want to go to. And at that point, I'll know, hey, I want to jump over to Tennessee, stay in Alabama. And I'll hit a list of stores and it'll show me, put it in order. And also keeps me from running circles. Although I still seem to do that with freelance stops. Um, I do like to see squirrels a lot. So I'll say, oh, that's a new store. Let me jump in there. So let me do say that that is one thing that you need to get out there and do is look for other stores besides the Walmarts, besides the big lots. Um, they're a, in a hardware store or a actor, tr actual tractor supply store. Some of those have toys. You know, I love toys. I love to sell the toys. So those may be areas that you haven't thought about. So think outside the box on that. And the next thing would be connections. When you're out in these stores, stop and talk to the managers. I highly recommend uh, making friends with the managers, the employees, the cashiers. Um, a lot of times, if you have a cart full of an item, they kind of know what you're doing. They've seen this before. So don't be afraid to ask for more of an item. A lot of these managers are, are off commission, so they want you to take the inventory. Uh, at this point, we have about five store managers that we have connections with that I can call at any time and say, hey, you know, I need this item. And they'll say, okay, I'll pull it for you. Um, also be respectful once you form those relationships. Uh, lunch and flowers go a long way with these people. So, you know, if you if they say, hey, you can go to my back room and you can take a gander and see what you want, the inventory come in, leave it the way you left it. Um, leads list. Leads list is something, yes, we all start with because it's low-hanging fruit at, sometimes and it's easy and it kind of gives you a fast turn on inventory. Um, when people say... Purchase leads list for rabbit trailing and thinking outside the box. That is so true. Rabbit trailing is going to be your best friend. Thinking outside the box is going to include, again, thinking of stores that you never thought to stop at. So once you, you know, spend the time putting in the reps, and if you know that term, I'm sure you know who say, says that. It is so true. You have to put in the reps for this. Um Experience equals knowledge and creates good instincts. So once you're seasoned at this and it doesn't take long, you kind of got your instincts kick in. And you're like, oh, I think that's going to be good, especially with Walmart not having all the resources that we do on Amazon. You have to rely on your instincts a lot because you don't have the keeper. You don't have the how many sold this month, you know, right at your disposal all the time. I think the million dollar question is, is what to buy. Um, of course, you're going to have your repeat items that, you know, when I go out and I plan a trip, I know that I'm going after certain items. I'm going to grab those, but then I'm going to scan, scan, scan. I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at something and going, hey, this looks like it might be re really well. It did well last year in another version. Let's check this version. I evaluate cost at that time. I'll scan you know, on the Walmart app, I'll look to see, you know, hey, if I, I kind of use the rule of three, um, if it's three dollars and it's selling for 10, you know, I'll look at the reviews on it. 
Um, I'll do three test buys. A quantity of three is normally my number. And I know some people vary with that. That works for me. And a lot of these stores, they already know that I'm test buying. They'll say, you're test buying today. Yes, I am. Message me later today and let me know what you think or tomorrow. And they'll already pull those items for me. So that's kind of a way for me to keep up with, you know, what do I need to buy? Because if you're adding 20 to 30 new items a day, you can kind of forget things can fall through the cracks. On those fees, uh, Walmart charges pretty much, I just go with a, a 15%. I think in my head of 15% and kind of stick with that number. It could be lower in some categories, but I just stick with, you know, worst case scenario on there. The fees are straightforward, which I love. Um, in these stores, you know, make sure that you get your process down, especially it can be time consuming when you have to scan and look for new items, check your expiration dates. Um, just be mindful that you will make some bad buys once in a while. It's okay. Don't return the items. Uh, I just don't feel like that's a good practice. You know, they tell me these, they're like, bring it back. If it, no, that's my bad. I'll find a way to move it. So I'll pr normally put those on to eBay or Macari. Um, let's see, listing process. How do I get all this listed? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, utilize online receipts. If I'm shopping at a Walmart or a Target, something like that, I know when I get home, I can pull up my online accounts for those and I can actually see what I purchased for the day. As long as the card that you're using is attached to your account, I will pull those up and especially for Walmart and I'll grab that item ID real quick and then I'll list it into Walmart Seller Central. We normally go ahead and convert our items to WFS. So therefore the next day when my staff comes in, I have a cart listed with a new inventory and they will pull that inventory and go ahead and send out batches unless it's sold more merchant for fill before then we love to merchant for fill. That sounds a little crazy, but we do a little bit of both. Um, we're trying to even that out these days, but if it can move, that also tells me my test file is good. So that's another way not to have to wait for the items to get checked in and I can go ahead and purchase more. Shipping merchant for field. Uh, Mondays are, well, there are Mondays around here. Mondays, I normally <laughs> don't plan anything besides being here to answer questions, troubleshoot. If I have to leave on a Monday like yesterday, an unexpected MacBook failure, um, I know I'm covered. My employees are trained. They know how to handle this stuff. We have processes and procedures in place. Um, we'll come in, pull shipments. Everybody has their own workstation. Tape machines are going uh, air pockets. We do um, utilize our own warehouse. So my thought is I have the staff, it's three part-time employees, 1500 square foot warehouse. You know, why not utilize what I have without outsourcing that? Of course, if you are not in an area, I highly recommend that you do outsource those items. Um, we utilize the Walmart shipping and pirate ship. We kind of toggle between, we mainly use the Walmart shipping it is very clunky. It uh, resembles eBay with the days where we had, you know, 50 shipments going on eBay and we chose all the shipments and then input the information. But I feel like um, the delivery issues are covered with Walmart for the most part for the on-time delivery rates, which reflects in your account health protection. So to me, we kind of did an analysis between, you know, the difference on power at shift cost in Walmart and some days it's cheaper. So I, I expect that process to be improved shortly and be similar to probably the process of Amazon, but I'm not sure how far off we are from that. Um, customer service, does that increase due to margin fulfill on my end? Not really. The most requests we get or messages that we get are cancellation requests or items delivered, uh, but I didn't receive it. So we have canned responses set up for those. So we just hit the button. Anybody in the, in the warehouse can hit the button, answer a question. The most uh, messages we receive are actually from WFS customers, where WFS really should be answering the questions, but they're directed to us. So we do see a lot of that. Lastly, I will say, um, and this kind of is reflected in making connections. 
is we have daily pickups from UPS, FedEx, and we do one trip to USPS um, daily. We've built relationships with every one of our drivers with those establishments. We, ha we have them all. We can text them at the drop of a hat. We uh, communicate with them. If they want to come early one day, our pickup time, I'm absolutely with it. I'm like, yes, we will try to get our stuff done or if I need them to come late. You know, take the time to make those connections. Uh, could not tell you how many Easter baskets I made this year to hand out. Yes, it sounds silly, but <laughs> um, that extra candy and items that you have laying around that they always look at and go, what is she doing in here? Uh, you know, show your appreciation. It goes a long way. But that, that that's great, Leah. That um, I think it's it's great for all of us to be reminded that it the connections and the relationships end up being, you know, some of the most important pieces of running your business. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Omar talk about, uh, he's, he's kind of focused on listing as well, maybe a little more detail on the listing and also using VAs um, and be, um, you know, cognizant of the time. Um, I'm sure you'll all get a chance to dive deeper into how you've um, utilize these pro like Walmart, WFS versus seller fulfilled to scale up. Um, Omar, are you with us? Yes, I am. <clears throat> yeah, so um, I've been doing a lot of listing creations lately and I've been focusing on that. And what I realized is there's a lot of software for that, but um, ChatGPT has been doing really good for me for uh, listing creations. Uh, just, you have to make sure to get really good photos and what I use for ChatGPT, kind of my process is I get a broad keyword for the item, right? So if it's a toy, I put ChatGPT, what's the keyword for toys on Walmart? Uh, then I brought, then I get less and less and get it more to the item. And when I get to the details, Walmart tells you what they want. And you just basically type that in and put for this item and SEO optimized. I like to do that. I don't know why, but I feel like that's, been a real game changer for me is to say SEO optimized. And I have different chats for GPT. Uh, one is specially for Walmart. One is for eBay. And on eBay, I have it to where when I do my description, it tells it tells the customer, we're going to ship this USPS. And uh, so I really like chat GPT for listing creations. I'm still working on it. I'm still trying to fine tune it, but I've had really good results with a few uh, listings I've done. And I mean, it's just been a game changer for me. So I'm still using the free version of it. So hopefully I can get the paid version later and see if I got more success with that. But the main thing that has changed my Walmart has been having a VA. Uh, she's in the Philippines and she is awesome. She's, um, I hired her, me and Michael were sharing a VA and mine left me and we had to get another one. So uh, she does all, like the, one of the, most time consuming things for Walmart is cre uh, uploading your items to your catalog in Walmart. And my VA does all that for me. So when I get the item, I just, I put them in a spreadsheet and I don't have to wait anymore. She does it all for me. She opens cases. If the item goes unpublished, she uh, fills out all the sheets. She has access to everything. And I mean, she is really good at it. She is, she creates all my shipments. Once the shipment is ready to go, I just tell her, Hey, I've got a shipment ready to go. And she just, she she got it ready by the morning because she works at night. So, I mean, it's it's awesome. It's like, I, it used to take me, I don't know if y'all remember, but when we first started doing shipments, the page would just go down and like, it, you would lose your shipments. And uh, so I decided to switch over to VA and it stopped happening soon after that. But yeah, I mean, it, it was just awesome seeing her get all that done for me. And it might take her a little bit longer than me, but I pay her right now. 375 an hour. Uh, I started at 250, I think. So for $4 an hour, I can afford to have her spend more time on stuff. She responds to all my customers. She uh, She's starting to work on Amazon too, but she hasn't really got there yet. But the main thing that I've seen lately that we've done is she's taking care of all my uh, shipping discrepancies. So if Walmart doesn't receive all my items or loses some items, she's opening up cases for them. And she has, the first time she did it, she got me back $2,154 in refunds. And she's been getting me back 540 each. I mean, she texted me last night that she got me $89 back. So, I mean, and Walmart's really good about just, if you say you lost it and they 
can't prove they got it, they'll just give you your money back. So, but you have to tell them. So a lot of people use refund stacker. That's another really good one, but my VA is doing a really good job. So I'm just going to use her for now, <laughs> but that's what I've been using it. And another thing I forgot to say about listing creations is that on Amazon, I think you have to have GS1 barcodes on on Walmart, you don't. You can just buy regular cheap barcodes, and that's what I do. I bought like a hundred, so <laughs> so I don't have to worry about like buying these expensive barcodes. I'm sure they'll change it in the future, but we'll cross that bridge whenever we get to there. But that's what yeah, I, I just got my renewal for GS1 barcodes, and it's not cheap. It's... Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm okay with the cheap one right now. So Omar, you're primarily WFS. Yes, yes, about probably about 90% of my stuff. I mean, every now and then we'll have stuff that we can't convert to WFS and we'll sh uh, ship seller fulfilled or wholesaler stuff that I just really know that will sell, but it's going to sell slow. I'll buy it in bulk and I'll just ship it seller fulfilled because I don't want to be keeping staying on top of it, you know, but yes, I'm mostly WFS. And if uh, Leah brought this up, she said she'll often convert most of her items to WFS. If it's can if it's um enabled for WFS, can you still sell the same SKU seller fulfilled? Yes. So yes. that's different than <clears throat> than Amazon in terms of not having to flip it back and forth. Yes, yeah, so you can just put you just put a quantity in there and it tells and it just sells it. So yeah, we 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 uh transfer everything straight to WFS, convert it straight to WFS. And uh I mean if we want to sell it seller fulfilled, then we do. And if we don't, we just sell it WFS. The only thing is that you can't do it at the same time. So if if you have items in WFS, those are going to sell first and then it will convert back to the seller fulfilled and then they'll sell your items that route. So if you're locked. go ahead, Sarah. Sorry. I was just going to say, so if you're sending in all of your inventory to WFS, make sure you zero out your seller fulfilled counts first because you don't want to come back and sell more after your WFS runs out. Once your items are checked into WFS and you do have a seller count, self fulfill count left on there, it locks that, it grays that block out. So you cannot zero it out. So be careful that you are, once you convert it, you are zeroing it out. Everything. We have actually added that as a new process here. You're not allowed to send a batch in unless you do an audit after every day to make sure those items are zeroed out or you will oversell. That's a great tip. Omar, I know we'll come back to you um, a little bit later, but do you have anything else to add on kind of getting started and your your process there? Yeah, I mean, I think Leah covered it pretty good. I mean, just testing. I mean, there's no keep up for Amazon. I mean, it just, it doesn't exist. And it's probably good for us right now because a lot of people are scared to do it. And But I mean, if you test, I mean, you're going to find a bunch of good items. And, and also another important thing is getting rid of the items that don't sell. If an item doesn't sell, just after a while, just get rid of it. I mean, don't, there's no use in trying to wait for it to sell. You're just going to, you're just um, waiting to lose money later. I mean, just lose money now and get, and get out and move on with your money and, and buy something else. I mean, I think that's something I did last year where I finally around June was like, I've got a bunch of stuff in, in stock and it's not selling. So I just went ahead and lost some money, broke even, and but I got all my cash back and now I get to spend that on other stuff. So I think that's another thing that's, once you're starting, just realize like, if I'm going to lose money on this, let's just go ahead and get rid of it now after two months or whatever, you know, but um, for testing, I, I usually go a little bit sooner. I mean, if it doesn't sell, I'm just like, let's move on to the next one, find another item and, and not spend our time here. So, and money. Great. Um, next up, we've got uh, Michael talking about uh, UPCs and GTINs and some of the account maintenance. Um, I won't call it headaches, but challenges. Michael? Take yeah, it absolutely. Uh, yep. Yeah, so if, I might lose you if you don't already have a Walmart account, but um, I just figured the best way for me to talk about this is uh, I, I like to learn by doing. And it, it basically Walmart will tell you exactly what they need. Um, the biggest learning curve for me was the G10. So that is exactly 14 digits. And it's usually two zeros before the UPC. It could be one zero. It could be a zero after. You just have to figure it out. But Walmart will tell you eventually like, okay, this is only 13 and it needs to be 14 digits and you can figure it out. 
So knowing that G10, uh, basically that's what Walmart lives on. Um, if you're coming from Amazon, forget about the FN SKU or anything like that. You don't, especially for WFS, you don't need to have, if the item has a barcode on it at WFS, they will just scan that barcode. And you supposedly, they don't co-mingle. So your items are your items in the warehouse. Um, but I just wanted to clarify, like G, if you learn about G10, and that will help you get your items set up. So the one of the biggest headaches on well, on the platform is getting an item published. Um, so the easiest thing is once you set it up, it will tell you there it could go into error, it will go into unpublished, it could be unpublished due to the price, it could be unpublished due to gating, it could be unpublished for a lot of reasons. It could be an error for a lot of reasons. The brand doesn't match the manufacturer. Like there's a lot of random things and you don't ever know that until you set your item up. Um, once you do set your item up, you have it, like, uh, I think we just talked about it, but there's seller fulfilled, there's Walmart fulfilled, and then there's seller fulfilled WFS eligible. And so those seller fulfilled WFS eligible items are the ones that you can sell both uh, as seller fulfilled and send it to WFS. Um, my thing is it's best to set up your item as seller fulfilled and then convert it to WFS um, if you're planning to use the WFS. So I, I got into WFS pretty pretty quickly when I first started on the platform. Um, it's, it just makes things a lot easier for me. Uh, I focus mostly on Walmart. I don't really do any other platforms other than a little bit of Amazon. And so putting everything to that fulfillment channel is just easier for the way I have my business set up. Um, but also with that, the Walmart ID, I think like Leah mentioned, is basically the ASIN of Walmart. Um, and you can find that in the URL if you need to find uh, the Walmart ID if you're struggling with how to get the item set up. Um, as far as account help, so there's not really any IP, well, there is. So they do track all of your account health, but you're not really pinged, I guess, or dinged for an IP complaint as of now. Um, and all of it, we should probably all say like, all this is as of now. So Walmart is, is actually developing a lot faster than it has been, I think, in the last two years. So I think they will catch up to their Amazon processes eventually. But um. As of now, you, you know, if there if someone complains about the pro intellectual property, they'll just put the listing in error and you can't sell that listing. You might and they might get stuck at WFS and you'll recall them or you just can't list, you know, that you can't make any sales if it's so fulfilled. Uh, the biggest metrics to keep in mind on your account health would be uh, if you're doing a lot of seller fulfilled. So shipping performance, you're you are track like your shipper you know ups usps fedex if they if they can't get it on time you're actually accountable for that so you just got to be careful um of how many days you're setting as far as your shipping how fast you can get the item to the customer so i'd say when you're first starting out make sure six five six days as transit time is is good if you're use, using ground advantage um, or UPS ground just to cover, you know, give give them some time to get the product to the customer. Uh, also tracking your Walmart, your uh, customer messages are tracked. So if you don't respond in 48 hours, that's accountable. Um, estimated tracking, uh, what's the other one? Uh, your um, tracking number is accountable so if you're not putting valid tracking numbers in there you will get so basically walmart does not like drop shipper if you're here to drop ship walmart will figure that out very quickly and you will not have an account um and i've heard that from other people so uh refunds if your items are being refunded over a certain percent you're tracked on that too so all those those uh metrics are accountable and can shut your account down. Um, so just really be mindful of those things when you're first starting out. Um, on gating, I think we talked about in the past, or, you know, I think Sarah talked about that a lot, but basically just 
what I did and what I still do is open a case for everything. So if an item is not published, it's going to get a case. And they may say, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll close the case, reopen the case again, and a little bit maybe more specific, like, okay, I can't change the title. So this is what the title needs to be. And then they may come back and say, okay, well, show us a real life picture of the product or the that the UPC matches the product or whatnot. Um, but yeah, just continually open cases. And now that, that leads me into like talking about the VA. So I use my like a lot like Omar, I utilize the VA for a lot of things. Um, she has bought back a lot of time. So, and a lot of headaches. So back in the, so I started the VA because the Walmart site was crashing. Um, items out at were unpublished and I was waiting for cases, waiting for it to become published. So I just pass all that on to her. So she creates cases for everything. She makes sure that the item is published. Like her role, main role is to publish every item that I, that I give her. I mean, she, she gets it done. I mean, it, it may take a few days, but she gets it done. Uh, the other thing she does is track like uh, profitability. She tracks um, basically like is keep us an eye on all of my inventory. Like she'll she'll see that I sent you know ten units in the WFS and there's only nine showing. So what happened to that one? Uh, she also have her tracking my like where the source of the product came from in the past sixty days for the item that's sold, and then she also does a little bit of repricing using the Walmart repricer. Um, and I think going into WFS in a little bit more detail. I know we are we kind of already discussed all this, but. Uh, 15% commission off the top. I mean, it does vary in different categories and based on the price, like there's a lot of nuances in that, but if you just use that 15% off the top and then I like to look for uh, profitable, expensive items that are lightweight. So if it's a quarter pound or less, you're going to pay $3 and 45 cents. I know Paul, I think you put that uh, repricing fee or the WFS fee schedule in the chat. If you'll note, if you look at that, so it says under a pound, but you have to add a quarter pound to your actual weight um, in order to find the actual fee. So if it's if if I am holding something in my hand that's you know 0. 0.8 pounds, I'm gonna step up to the next fee because their quarter pound uh, packaging pushes it over the the threshold. So I just I, I mean. Like like Leah too, like the rule of thirds, it's just easy to keep that. Like if you can, if it's profitable at a third, you know, the buy cost is a third or less of the price. Um, the other thing to mention though, is that if it's priced at under $10, Walmart WFS adds a dollar fee to your fulfillment. So unlike the days of small and light and Amazon, Walmart says, no, it's going to cost us more to get that cheap items to the customer. So you're going to be charged a dollar fee. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, WFS is super easy. The storage fees are very reasonable. I mean, I have stuff in there. I need to clean it up a little bit, but I've got things that have been there a long time and I'm not paying a lot in fees like I was on Amazon. So I'm fully bought into the Walmart platform. I think that's it. It's almost worth leaving it there sometimes and not having exactly. to until you do a cleanup of your inventory. Yeah. So I've got stuff sitting and I'm like, well, by this point, I'm just going to let it sit for Q4 because it's going to sell. It's up. sales. Yeah. <laughs> we can walk yeah. around our warehouse and I uh, have an employee that can touch something goes, we haven't, and then it'll sell. I'm like, go touch something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, Michael. That's, that's uh dense but super helpful um yeah. and and i think we'll we'll revisit those things probably as you talk about your scaling journey uh sarah's going to talk quickly about some oa and replans um and then we'll move into a q a uh, and then get to the second part okay so um just like them i use a va as well so just to touch on replans actually first um in my SKU, my SKU is laid out UPC, price, supplier, and then date. And at the end of the month, when my VA is pulling all of my profit and loss, they also pull all of the SKUs that have sold that month. And they give me a total of how many I sold. So I can use that list in order to go through and replen um, once a month and order what I need to order um, for my catalog. So 
that has helped me a lot in order to stay on top of not just replens, but also aged inventory. Walmart doesn't have a way to track aged inventory. So by having that date that you sent it in, you can start liquidating at the three month mark or whatever you choose um, by having that date on there. So just a quick tip there. Um, as far as OA, what I love about Walmart is you can do Walmart to Walmart flips. Yes, you can go in store and scan RA and do the clearance, but you can also do that online and schedule pickups, or you can utilize cash back and have the item shipped to you and then sent in. Um, I've had a lot of success with Amazon to Walmart flips as well. So those are two huge sources for inventory. Um, with it being on Walmart, it's already in the catalog, so you don't have to worry about creating listings. But I also like to step outside of Walmart um, for stores like Target or um, you know any website essentially that you're sourcing already for Amazon. If you sell on that platform, you can sell it on Walmart as well. They have a WFS um, calculator that's free to use. I know Paul's going to talk about some options here that you'll also be able to utilize in order to get an idea of fees. Um, but there's so much opportunity with Walmart. And the best part too is if you're already sourcing for Amazon, always check those SKUs on Walmart because chances are it's probably selling for more on Walmart and your fees are just so much simpler to compute. So I've had a lot of luck with OA and especially with Q4 coming and back to school coming, like use those resources. Sarah, did you say your SKU is UPC cost supplier and date? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Joey. Oh, thanks, Joey. Yeah. So anyway, there's lots of different ways to source for Walmart. Um, I, I guess you do what works for you, but try to utilize all of them because you can schedule a lot of Walmart pickups in one day while you're already going there to source RA. So. Great. Plans the cash back. I love cash, cash back. back. Cash back. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. I will say too, Walmart Plus, if you have Walmart Plus, <clears throat> it's not good to use that for online sourcing, but when you're in the store, you can very much use your Walmart Plus to add all of those items to your cart. And then you can go to the self-checkout and put your uh, tax ID information right in there to get the sales tax exempt and you're on your way. So there's no more waiting in lines at Walmart for someone to give you that tax exempt. So Walmart Plus can be huge for you as well. That's a good tip. Um, this is self-serving, but someone asked in the chat what scan power tools um, can be used um, currently or are coming. Uh, we'll talk about this again at the end um, in a little more detail, but uh, we added Walmart sourcing to our mobile app. So this works on the web for OA, but it also works uh, in stores and in retail. Um, we have a video on our ScanPower YouTube channel that covers setting it up, but we ask you to enter your credentials into the app, and then we will um, bring up product information, all that we can currently get from the API. We'll help you calculate net payout. So you put in your cost, you put in the price, and we'll um, pull out the fees and give you the profitability for the product. You can add discounts in the same way that you've always been able to in the in the Amazon uh, side of things. And then you can flip back and forth between the Walmart channel and the Amazon channel. So it, it's really possible to, you know, source both for Amazon and Walmart at the same time. And you can add things to your buy list and all that information can be transferred over, emailed or downloaded, <clears throat> um, you know, and filtered by channel. So uh, lots more coming, but we're, we're working on WFS and uh, inventory management right now and uh, excited to show more later, uh, later in the quarter and, and next quarter. Um, I just want to open it up real quick to questions. And, and I think it might make sense for us to um, do Q&A and then as questions come up or as the panelists think of things that were important for you in scaling your business. Maybe you can just roll that into your answer or uh, feel free to just um, 
pitch in with your ideas um, as needed because we're we're getting towards the end of the hour and I don't want to I don't want to you know limit us to an hour but I know a lot of people have set aside that amount so um, we'll just kind of combine the, the two parts um, now and let let people ask questions um, if you do need to come on and speak um, there's not a, a way to uh, raise your hand but I'll um, I'll look for questions and if you need to, I can unmute you. Uh, so Noah asked, what software do you use for OA? Are you using any website monitoring software or store stalking? Um, so for me, I do manually manual sourcing. I do the same thing for Amazon. Um, <clears throat> there is a new Martyr software out. I've played with it a little bit. Um, it's nice to see WFS versus seller fulfilled counts, but um, that's a every Chrome extension, right? Chrome extension, yes. Um, but for me, I do all manual sourcing, and I still do test buys when I do it online. Um, that's why it's nice to kind of stay in Walmart because you can do those test buys and then go grab more right off the shelf if they're flying. So I keep it simple. I'm not techie though. <laughs> I'm here. Same. Yeah, same. So Hi. I'll, yeah, it seems like I started, well, I don't do a lot of OA, but with the art, but when I do, and I used, um, there are several different softwares, uh, Volley Smarter and the other, there's another one I can't remember off the top Data of my Spark. head. Data Spark. Yep. And, uh, first, like I can tell you for a fact that their estimates are not right based on what I've sold of that same exact item. And so you really have to just be your own keeper. Like you have to create your own what your own process and your own system for determining how many things you want to sell. So yeah, if you go to a store that is limited, uh, you know, and that's all they're gonna ever have on the shelf, and you know that brand has sold for you in the past, I'm probably gonna take the whole shelf. Or if it's like, oh, I haven't seen this here before, it's got, you know, a hundred uh, you know, reviews on the Walmart listing, uh, you know, you kind of like, okay, well, I'll test 10 or I'll test 20 or I'll just test two. <laughs> you just have to kind of like, once you get into the rhythm and knowing how the items sell and what sells on Walmart, I think your, your personal like history, your own sales history is going to be your best Experience. source of data. Like there, everybody's trying to throw the data out there. Like I get it. Like it's everybody wants something to tell them like, yes, buy or don't buy, but it, it's like a constant test, test buy. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately I think it's related to Walmart's API. So I don't think Walmart is giving all the information that Amazon gives. And so it's really hard for anyone to, to create something that will tell them, yes, this sells 200 items a month and like you should, you know, buy it. So that's just my personal take on it. That's good advice. We're, we're going through the, um, the application. We got accepted into Walmart's solution provider um, network, and we're going to go through a technical integration slash onboarding uh, partially to make the process of like using our app, uh, more seamless. So you just kind of approve us rather than copying, pasting credentials in. Uh, but that's one of the first things I'm going to ask um, to our account rep is, you know, what what's coming that will help sellers know what they should be selling. And, and we'll see, you know, it's like you said, it's, it doesn't replace your instincts, but it's, it's always nice to have some, some guidelines and some, some data there. So I'll I'll keep everyone up to date as as we get further into the solution provider network. I will say too, for now, not having all of that data software is a barrier to entry. And that's why we love Walmart so much because it keeps seller counts down. So use that as an advantage for you to ride the wave right now of less competition because as soon as it opens up, everyone's gonna jump over. So enjoy this right now. Yeah, another thing that I've noticed too is like community, like having a group of people that you get along with that maybe you haven't heard of a brand, but you ask the people that you were friends with and then they know and they're like, no, this is a really good seller. And now both of y'all have a new item that y'all can sell, right? So, I mean, I think that's another, that's, that's part of growing too, um, having a community. And I mean, especially as Amazon and Walmart sellers, 
we're pretty much on our own. I mean, we, we got some of us have workers, but some of us don't. Like, I don't have any workers, just me and my wife. And you get you feel alone and you're by yourself. So having a community of people to be around and be able to talk to on a daily basis, you know, to talk about Amazon, to complain about Walmart, you know, to complain like it's just nice to have. So <laughs> huge. I think it's a necessity. That was one of my biggest takeaways from this call is to let people know this can be a lonely. Uh, no one to be there to give you a a girl or add a boy on the back, mm -hmm. which some of us need. Um, so celebrate your successes, no matter how big or small they are. And absolutely learn from your failures because this is real. I mean, we're real people. You know, mm -hmm. I think everybody has the same obstacles. Yeah. So definitely. Yeah, that's a thing too. When I first started, um, everybody in this call should give this a pat on the back because that's where I learned a lot of my stuff from little small details. Like you probably listen to this whole call and you get one thing out of it. That one thing could grow your business two, three times, you know? So, I mean, I think that's something that I've really learned from my growing, like being on random calls and just getting one piece of good advice, you know? So, I mean, everybody should be proud of themselves for being on this call and just trying to learn. I love that. Yep. Well, while we're waiting for more questions, why don't we why don't we go around um, the group and just talk about you know one thing that you feel like helped you you know clear a hurdle or scale your business, and it can be more than one thing. But I yeah. think I was just trusting my instincts to begin with. Even on the my you know Amazon journey, it was like no, I, this really couldn't be true. I need to just buy this, not all of it. And I would always get home. So I would just be in a little rat race of going back and getting more. So, you know, trust your instincts. Um, and that really boosted our success is let's go. Let's just do it. Um, you're going to make mistakes, but just keep going. Yeah, for me, uh, would be moving into a warehouse. Uh, I took up my whole garage and a guest room and uh went through q4 my first q4 on walmart was crazy and i was like i gotta get this out of the house so i found a warehouse of a thousand square feet i remember standing in there empty and i said there is no way i could ever fill this up yes. and literally two months ago i had like six pallets and every shelf full and i was like <laughs> you know it it filled me like it, it filled up so you you can do it. it it may look like you can't do it but yeah it just just yeah believe in yourself and you can definitely if you have empty empty space anywhere you can fill it up if you if you just work for it you know work hard and just put your focus on that you have to implement that warehouse cleanup day once a month <laughs> That's oh yeah <laughs> so true I have one employee who's OCD and she'll come in. She's like, I've had it. Today is the day. And she never <laughs> complains about anything. She's like, I'm cleaning up. Go for it. For me, I think what changed for us was consistency, um, making sure that we're doing something every single day to move our business forward. And the VA was huge. And then creating um, SOPs for every little thing, whether it's shipping an item so that my prepper doesn't have to ask me questions, or if it's creating SOPs for your VA to convert or yourself to convert or whoever's ask, whoever's helping you. Um, we have some tricks like a, having a rolling rack. We fill a rolling rack and that's our shipment. And when that rolling rack gets full, that becomes our shipment and we we send it off. So nothing's hiding in the warehouse and inventory is flipping quickly. So I think just practice makes perfect, right? So if you're consistent every day and you're pushing forward, you're going to come across things that need to be tweaked and changed that can save you time. And it's all about saving time. So between that, and then like Leah mentioned earlier was relationships with managers that changed everything for me, for both Amazon and Walmart. I mean, I have managers that just text me, Hey, we got this in. Would you like it? <laughs> yes, I would. Um, so think outside the box and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I'm a, I'm so shy and yet I'm learning to introduce myself to managers and let them know what I do. Be proud of that. You're a, you're a bulk buyer for Walmart. They haven't heard that they've heard I'm an Amazon seller, you know, but this is different and that gets people excited. I had a manager take me to the back room and show me everything that was on clearance that hadn't hit the floor yet because they thought that was so cool that their products were going to be sold on Walmart. So you just never know what you're going to run into, but um, yeah, 
be open and willing. You yeah. can even make connections with Walmart managers. 100%. Um, and I don't think I ever knew that or explored that because I'm selling it on Walmart. It's like, is that taboo? But I had one the other day walk up to me when I was checking out with a buggy full of an end cap item. And I didn't get the whole end cap because I really wasn't thrilled about the price, but I knew I could move it. She said, do you want the whole entire rest of the end cap? I'll sell it to you for X amount of money. Here's my phone number and call me and I'll have stuff ready for you. So the items that are saturated out there um, that people are getting for a certain price, she's taking her machine and marking them down even half of that. So my buy cost is lower. And it's just because of forming that relationship. Yeah, I think you can't push those relationships either. I think th they just become, yeah. the, right? So I've got a Walmart that's two minutes from me and everybody loves me there, but we still haven't got to that to that area where we're like discounting extra stuff. I've got a Ollie's that's about an hour from me and they call me, they like discount stuff, you know? So like, it's just like Leah said earlier, just be, leave everything where it was at. Be nice, just be courteous. Be nice. It's about their family, you know? I have a the Ollie's manager, he and him talk about like, like he he loves doing weights and stuff like that, and I used to do jiu jitsu. We talked about that stuff, you know, and just like don't push it. Just be nice, be a normal person. Like you're trying to talk to a regular person. Don't like try to get something out of it, right? So I think that's another thing that I've really learned. So, <clears throat> what are your favorite categories? Toys. <laughs> toys. Notice my posters in the background. Yeah, I think toys, but right now I'm trying to move to like daily stuff people that use people that stuff stuff that people use every day right so like just towels i mean sheets uh underwear you know so, stuff like that that people use every day and i think that's just the stuff that sells really good for me lately but toys has been my main category <clears throat> yeah i think everybody kind of starts in toys um grocery moves really fast um I've been trying to utilize OA more when I source for Amazon. So don't be afraid to sell those items. Like, I mean, coach sells on Walmart, Tom Ford sells on Walmart. Like you can sell all of those bigger brands on Walmart. So don't be afraid to, you know, step outside of Walmart to look for inventory. So those have kind of been some of my favorites lately is the, is the uh, brands and categories that no one's thinking about. You have no competition and you might be the only seller. We really do a hodgepodge of items. Yeah. I guess the biggest, after I form these relationships and the biggest deer in headlights is when the manager looks at me and says, now tell me what you're looking for. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if it makes a profit, it's for me. Exactly. Yeah. There was a question, I think, about the repricing. Um, Oh yeah. So, so I personally, I uh, that was one of the things that my VA was doing manually until it became, you know, when there's a thousand, two thousand SKUs, it's kind of hard to reprice that manually every day. Uh, but I do think if you don't want to use the Walmart repricer, then manually repricing could be better than the another app. So I use the Walmart repricer right now, and going back to the whole API thing, I from talking to other sellers, like the information that those repricer softwares are getting is still delayed. So if you do want to be, you know, proactive, aggressive in your repricing or, or want to just, you know, whatever it is, it's, it is kind of daunting to see like the spreadsheet that Walmart tells you to fill out and, you know, put in all the details, but you can figure it out relatively easy and, it's warm and it, the price does go down and it goes up. So it will go up and down. Um, and when I started using that, I definitely saw my sales increase. So I, I like the Walmart built-in repricer and mostly I like it because I know it's Walmart, you know, is instant data versus maybe a few hours delayed or even a couple of days delayed. I do the same. And when you use the Walmart repricer, you can um, divide that into, you can use the same strategy, but have different files. So like I'll have one for all of my Walmart clearance because I know I have to be um, a little aggressive on my pricing. Whereas maybe I have a wholesale item 
So we'll, I'll keep that separate and I can adjust as needed. Or um, like I said, those brands that I don't have competition, on, I don't have to include those in the repricer. So you can create different um, files for like even each supplier, like if your Walmart had one versus Target and stuff so that you can, you can turn them on and off quickly instead of having to have all of your SKUs on one repricer. We had questions about um, um, one from Amanda, a minimum profit for each item uh, that uses a guideline. And then Arzu was asking about account suspensions. If your account is suspended and you know your appeals are getting rejected, is there a way to get a hold of an actual person, you know, and work work that at on Walmart? So I'll take this one because I actually went through a suspension. Um, so last year I had a suspension due to canceled orders from a software I was using. Um, so you have to be really careful to read exactly what it is that they're looking for. They're going to want a plan of action so that you can correct whatever went wrong, whether it was canceled orders, it, they suspected you were drop shipping, whatever it might be, and carefully identify and correct that problem. Um, I personally reached out to Riverbend. The f I actually got suspended twice, but that was because of a bot. Um, the first time I reached out to Riverbend and they were able to help me. Um, I think they have some connections with Walmart and they wrote the plan of action for me. And then the second time I was able to handle it myself because I had that experience. So I think as far as having someone to talk to at Walmart, it's really about who you know. If you have an account rep, hold on to that contact information um, because you can't just call and talk to someone in the account health department. Um, so if you want to send me a DM, I could help you. I can try and help you because I do have some contacts, but um, that was just my general experience. I don't know if you guys have anything separate. I use a I use Jeff Schick. He does the Amazon and the Walmart. I have him on retainer. I've never had to use him for Walmart, but he says he can use Walmart. So I just, I sleep a little better knowing that someone, I have, you know, a lawyer or an account, you know, health guru, I guess you could say that mm -hmm. should be able to help in the time that I need help. But I think everybody should, if you're on Walmart or if you're on Amazon, like having the river bin, having the, uh, I think it may, there might Seller be Seller Basics, Basics or Jeff Schick. There's a few people out there that specialize in this. And so when the time comes, because the time will probably come, then I can utilize, you know, that service. And it's, it's like car insurance. Uh, yes. Yeah. We I use, can use it every month, but. <laughs> yeah. We currently use Seller Basics and we haven't had any yeah. issues. That's what I use now. They're great. Um, do you have a minimum profit for each item? Money is money. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that comes down to testing too, because if I have an item that I know is going to sell multiple times a day, I'm willing to go lower on that because I know it's going to sell. So mm -hmm. your own data, you have to form your own data. What about you guys? I think the profit margins are so high on Walmart, yeah. a lot from Walmart that, you know, some of these items for the price they sell for, it's just, I can afford to lower another item. So I think you got to think of it as a whole too, your whole catalog. So don't focus in an individual skews so much. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, you can have a tiny item that makes it a sense, but if it's a tiny item, you can fit a thousand in the box, you know, you can, right. I mean, that's $500 or whatever it is, you know, so you don't, don't limit yourself to, like three dollars profit, you know, because I mean sometimes a dollar item will will build up, you know. So yeah. <laughs> so your advice would be review your profitability monthly at the very least. And do do any of you look at it more frequently than that uh, when you're looking at your whole inventory? Well, pretty much do mine monthly. Okay. If I have an item that I sent in WFS that I'm not you know, it's on the edge of like, is it five or six dollars when it gets there and it sells? And I'll actually go back and review that because you can, it's pretty easy to see per item, like per sale, like what you made on that. And so I'm like, okay, that's good to know. So then that kind of goes into your bank of like, okay, that size, that weight, that price. If I find something else similar to that, then I kind of know, okay, I'll, I can pick it up and it's only going to be six dollar fulfillment. So in that kind of way, I do 
you know, kind of go into it in detail, but. Be careful if you're just starting out in your merchant fulfilling and you have an item that is uh, two day shipping and it's first class weight. Uh, sometimes those prices can be astronomical to get it to a customer in two days. That's where our volume kind of um, can keep our metrics in in line where we may have two or three that would fall into that category on a Monday when we're shipping a lot. So we'll jump over to pirate ship and we'll still, we'll send that. This is not best practice. I don't recommend it, but we'll send that at a normal first class cost and hope for the best. So we've never had any issues. Normally it gets there on time and our metrics look fine. So does, does Walmart have a, a shipping template like Amazon where you can say, you know, in general, this is how I'm willing, you know, th th these are the metrics that I'm willing to meet in addition to the platform's minimums. Like yeah. wh whether you'll, you know, ship to different regions, whether you'll ship overnight, th that kind of thing. You can yeah. adjust your shipping times with days. So like I tell California that it's going to take the longest amount possible. And then all of my other states that are close to me, I'll give them, you know, two or three day shipping because I want people that are close to me to buy from me so but you have to provide shipping across the country okay yeah so there's a value option the value is default and then you can add a uh, standard i believe is what they call it and you can either choose to have standard shipping for zero or you can put in your prices um, per item and per pound and you can break that down even into like for georgia you know i can do just north central south or just you know central you, know, you can really hone in on that so yeah if you're having issues with your account health and you see okay like for me uh sometimes it's taken four days to get to south florida i'm like it shouldn't take four days to get to south florida but let me take that off of that template so that their shipping time is you know now five days but definitely pay attention to that when you're first starting because there'll be states, like you said, that are right next to us that they're not going to get there. And I don't mm -hmm. understand why. So we would just remove that state. So just kind of play around with it. Um, but watch it. Do do an audit on what you're doing just to make sure that there's just so much to learn at the beginning that you don't want your account shut down for something like that. Any other questions? Good, good questions, Amanda. So Amanda's asking, you know, what percent are you seller fulfilled versus WFS? I probably I, say that I'm like 90-10 WFS because I, like I said, I rarely do merchant fulfilled. I mean, I'll have some items, but yeah, I'd say about 90% WFS. Same. We're working towards about 70-30 right now as we're trying to push more in WFS. Yep, and I'm 90, yeah, probably 99.5% WFS until Q4. Q4, I yes. will kick in the, yep. I'll get my supplies. I have ship station, so it does make it a little easy and I'll, I don't mind cranking out orders every single day during Q4, but once January comes around, I'm over it. Right. <laughs> Have your boxes ready of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Make sure your Rolo printer does not have a little dot in the middle where one of the you, the lines, the tracking lines is. In <laughs> and you do 200 shipments and they're sitting out there waiting to be picked up, but they can not, can't scan. So you have to redo them. Yes, I've had to do that before. I, have, I had to go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it was a mess. But yeah. Again, make connections because USPS friend is the one that called me and said, hey, these four bags of orders aren't scanning. What do you want me to do? That's so, so nice. Yeah. They called you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, could someone explain more about how ShipStation works and, and why, why you don't buy Walmart shipping versus using ShipStation? I think this is, uh, it's do been mentioned a few times. ShipStation? But... I think I, yeah. I do. I so ship, 
ShipStation is a software that you can connect to both Walmart. Um, you can connect it to Amazon, but I do my shipping through Amazon. You connect it to eBay, all of the all of the platforms. So it's all in one place. Um, I know VQ is a great option because they give you rewards, but our prep staff is already trained on ShipStation. We can fly through ShipStation so fast. Um, so we stick with it. Um, and we have our business UPS account already in ShipStation. So it pulls from there. So we're paying with credit card rewards anyways. Um, and it has an app. So it's just, it's a third-party software that works with Walmart. Michael, I don't know if you could add anything to that, but I personally yeah, so love what, it. Yeah. So I, I, I love ShipStation. It helps a lot. Um, the biggest thing, and I don't, I need to verify if Walmart still does this. So when I first started, if you receive an order, you have to acknowledge that order mm. that you received it. Right. You can't just let it go until you ship it. So if you miss that acknowledgement, then you're dinged for that. So ShipStation automatically acknowledges every order that you receive. That way, then I go in. If you want to ship just one time a day, you can go in. All your orders have already been acknowledged. It's hands off work that you haven't had to do. And then the, you can do it from the app. You can uh, save your settings. You can default. So, you know, I have everything loaded into ShipStation based off of USPS Ground Advantage, and I just put in the weight, um, and that saves, just saving clicks, especially in Q4. Like, if you're doing, and Leah probably knows, when you have lots of orders in one day, <laughs> you can save your clicks, like, whatever you can do to save your time. So, that's why I really like ShipStation. That goes back to systems and processes, too. Like, it's not free, but we're so used to it. And like you can save, like if you have a a can of seasoning, right? If you've gotten multiple orders of that item, you can save the dimensions for that item because you're gonna be shipping in the same box. So next time you, you log in, that's all information is already saved on there. And like I don't want to change stuff that's already just so we're so used to it, even if we have to pay an extra what is it, I think thirty dollars whenever you're yeah, so worth it. Yeah. Just like you can save the dimensions, you can save a picture of the item too. So like during Q4, if if you are getting sale, Walmart doesn't have an app, so ship station does. So if you're in Walmart and you can see what you've sold already, well, I need to go grab more of this Barbie or something because it just flew off the shelf and I have 10 orders or whatever it might be. So it just, it's a time saver for us. Awesome. Um, I'm going to do a quick demo of the Walmart Yay. features in scan power uh, before we, we lose anyone to time. But we'll definitely stick around. Um, panelists, you guys have been really generous with your time. And um, if other people have questions, we'll try to take those. And if we run out of time and you need to go, that's no problem. Um, we'll, we'll make sure we get your contact information at the end so that people can reach out to you directly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So... Just do this. Okay. Um, so if you're not familiar with scan power, we do uh, sourcing, prepping, and shipping to Amazon FBA. That's been our bread and butter for a very long time. And the two things that we started with were a mobile app that you could use to source products in retail. It, it also works on the web, as you can see. And we've recently added this Walmart uh, channel button here. So if you scan a UPC and you're in the Walmart um, ver, ver, uh, mode of the app, you're going to see the item ID, which you can use to list it. You're going to see brand, price, category. Hey, Paul. It's a little different. Uh, can you all see my screen? I can't. I don't know if, anyone, if it's just me, but I just see fish which is super cool, but maybe it's just me. Michael no, we Omar. see your desktop, but I think you're trying to show us the app, right? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me try this again. Let's just go for a specific thing. How about there? Yay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the mobile app. It looks like this on on your device, it looks like this on the web. And you can scan a UPC 
or do a keyword search, and we're going to show you all the information we currently get from the API. Um, if you want to, you can, you know, set the price or um, add your cost. I bet these cost more than 12, but um, you can then see the net profit after fees and commission. Um, we're going to be adding WFS fees to this, uh, which is what we do in the Amazon side. And you can also see how is this selling on Amazon? So you can click on the channel icon in the top right, and you can switch between Amazon and Walmart. Now to set this up, uh, we do have a YouTube video, um, which I will paste a link in and, and we'll follow up with. But if you go to the YouTube Scan Power channel, um, there's a video for how to go into settings and add your Walmart credentials. Um, so your partner ID and your API key and secret are going to be accessible mm -hmm. from Seller Center and Walmart. And once those are in, uh, we'll automatically show you the Walmart features of the app. So if you add it to your buy list, it, it, it will look very similar to um, those of you who use it on Amazon. Um, and once it's on the buy list, that buy list can be viewed, um, edited. It can also be um, emailed. So three dots here in the upper right. Um, you can say edit and you can you know, selectively either delete or archive items. And then you can also email it to whichever account you're logged into to ScanPower. If you say email, it's going to send it directly to your email. Um, and then there's some filtering of the buy list on mobile. And when you log into ScanPower on the web, um, you can also see these buy list items there and you can uh, filter by channel as well. So I'll just log in. Yeah, so when you when you go to the bottom of your buy list on the web and download, there'll be a new column that is the channel. So you can sort between Walmart and uh, Amazon. But um, if you have any questions about setting up or trying out the Walmart features, if you have an existing ScanPower account, um, this is going to be enabled for you automatically. If you'd like to try ScanPower, if you're not a ScanPower customer, we have a special offer today for you. And um, I'm going to paste a link um, to that offer in the chat here. So um, anyone who's registered for the webinar, uh, you'll receive follow-up emails that also include this link. But um, that is uh, a really generous offer. If you want to try our Walmart features, we're going to give you 50% off for three months. And you always get a, a two-week trial for free. So, um, you know, please check that out if you want to uh, use ScanPower for some of your sourcing. Um, on our roadmap, coming in the next two months, we're going to add inventory management and Walmart fulfillment services support. So right now, you would need to take your buy list and um, basically export that and, and import it into a spreadsheet that you could then upload into WFS for bulk import. You can also do all of this individually as you can on other platforms. But um, that process, uh, we're going to work on streamlining that as the first step so that you can just generate um, all, the, all the information from your buy list into WFS bulk import. And then the next step, and for those of you who are familiar with our prep and ship product, um, we'll, we'll allow you to take your buy list, um, choose Walmart F or WFS as your channel, and then just import directly from the buy list into ScanPower and create shipments to WFS, print your labels, um, you know, all of that. So, so that's where we're headed. And, um, after that, we'll probably add some uh, profitability and COGS tracking as well, which we already do on the Amazon side. 
Um, but we're, we're really excited for uh, all of this. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Paul at scanpower.com, or you can reach out to our support team, support at scanpower.com, and uh, we'll be happy to help you. That's so exciting. Very exciting. Well, thank you to all the panelists. Um, you all deserve a round of applause. This has been uh, super uh, informative for me, and I know it has been for the whole audience. This has been recorded, so we're going to share that with you all and uh, give you an opportunity to um, contact the, the panelists if you'd like to follow up. I know um, everyone has you know such deep knowledge of this, even after such a short time. So it's it's really impressive what you guys have built um, on Walmart. And um, if you'd like to paste in your um, ways that people can contact you, you can go ahead and put those in the chat, and we'll also include those in some Amazing. of our follow ups. Where's Joey? Where is he? Thank you, Michael. Leah on Instagram. We got some Instagram handles coming here. Um, Omar, thank you. Not very active, but I'm trying to get there, so... Yeah, me too. My Instagram's kind of my uh, least active channel. But, my favorite. Uh, <laughs> least active. Yeah, send me a, you can send me a message on Instagram. I will definitely reply. Same here. Awesome. Send me a message, but I probably won't be posting stuff for a while. I'll try to get active. But. And if I don't know the answer, I'll send it to one of those three. <laughs> yeah, I'll find your answer. <laughs> I will. He will. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone. It's been uh, really great to have you. And uh, I, I hope we can do it again and do the advanced Walmart webinar, which um, I know people have lots of questions. And, and as they scale, they'll want to know more and pick your brains. So thank you again. Everyone have a great afternoon. And uh, we'll, we'll see you around. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everyone.